Welcome to worship as we gather together in what God has promised and given us. As we looked at last week, as we saw that spiritual rest is ours and a blessing, now we see that what that spiritual rest then directs us in our look ahead towards eternal life, but also as we live our lives. What, what impact is spiritual rest for our future when we see that God has been so gracious in giving us spiritual rest? Our service, uh, the order of service that we'll be following is page 38 in the front of the hymnal. I didn't get the boards changed for the hymn boards. Um, it was that or I put in the wrong PowerPoint. So I figured you'd rather have the right one up top instead of the ones on the side. So I took that gamble. Hopefully that works. Um, we will follow the order of, order of the word, which will be on the screen, or you can follow along in your hymnal. We'll begin with our first hymn. We're going to sing hymn 28, and we'll sing verses 1 and 2 and 5 and 6. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve Him as His dear children. But we have disobeyed Him and deserve only His wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to Him and plead for His mercy. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the per innocent death and the perfect life of our Lord Jesus Christ, He has removed your guilt forever. You are His own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to His will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all who trust in you, mercifully hear our prayers. 
Be gracious to us in our weakness, and give us strength to keep your commandments in all we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our first lesson before us is recorded in Genesis chapter 3. This portion takes place right after Adam and Eve had disobeyed God by doing what he had said not to. And when God comes to confront him, now he is, he is going to recognize where they stand with him. They are fleeing from his presence. They are hiding themselves in shame. They are not willing to come to God because they have created a separation they can't fill. So how does the God, how does our God, how does the only God respond to such a group or such a people as Adam and Eve and thereby us? Our first lesson. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and all the wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. This is the word of God. Our psalm this afternoon is Psalm 51, the first part. It's found on page 86 in the front of the hymnal.
Our second lesson from God's Word comes to us from St. Paul's letter to, second letter to the Corinthians chapter 4. This will serve as the, the text for our sermon this afternoon. It ties in both what was brought up in the first lesson and then the gospel lesson. And so it's the application of those two things. Paul writes, It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. This is God's Word. Our verse of the day. Alleluia. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia. stand out of respect for listening and hearing the words of Christ. Our gospel lesson is recorded in Mark's gospel, chapter 3. Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Beelzebub. By the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. So Jesus called them and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, No one can enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can rob his house. I tell you the truth, all the sins and blasphemies of men will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying, he has an evil spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers? he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. We'll continue with our next hymn, which is hymn 596.
Grace, mercy, and peace to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, their brothers and sisters in Christ. Do as I say and do. How often does that phrase come up? We know what the usual phrase is, do as I say and not as I do. Because we often, as human beings, like to say, I know what is said, but this is just where it ends up. I I can't control it. But when someone actually does what they say, sometimes it's an abnormality, but that's where we really decide to trust someone, right? I know what I'm getting when they say they're going to do something. And we look for people in all areas of life that can do that for us, even our own family. It's one thing to say, I'm sorry. It's another thing to act and to help restore. And so we come before ourselves looking again here at at this dilemma. What do we believe? And then how does that lead us to actually act? as Christians. We all know those people that we like to identify as hypocrites, right? Oh, they say that they are Christians, but they don't listen to God's Word. They don't come to church. I don't really see that action, do they? They say God's Word's important, but they don't come to Bible class. That certainly is saying one thing and then doing something else, isn't it? And then we always think that that's someone else and not really ourselves. So where do we stand? How often have we caught ourselves saying, I'd really like to, and then we say, nah, never mind. So that's our tie-in between our Old Testament lesson and our Gospel lesson. See, our Old Testament lesson, when we look at Genesis chapter 3, We see God who comes to his creatures, who he had given everything to, and they decided to do something themselves. They knew what God said, but they said, I'd rather have this or I'd rather have that. And, and, well, you could hear it in the lesson, Adam blamed Eve and Eve blamed the snake. It wasn't their fault, really, they were saying. But God then identifies for them where they stand. There is going to be this divide, and we would expect nothing else from a righteous and holy and just God. If you say you do something, if I say, tell you not to do something, you do it, then here's the consequence. But what God does in such a situation is he talks about the consequences between what was going to happen with Adam and Eve and, and Adam and creation and, and Eve and all in childbirth and Eve and other people. But, but he gets down to it on how he's going to remedy the situation that stands between him and his creation, his people. When Jesus came to walk this earth and then teach people what it was that he wanted them to know about their salvation, he had the confrontation that took place in the gospel lesson. There were many people that wanted attachment to Jesus. But when things were challenging or people didn't necessarily like what he was saying, they wanted to use their attachment To get Jesus to do something else. So much so that the the family of Jesus were starting to worry that perhaps they're gonna that what Jesus is doing is gonna put a spotlight on them, and they really wanted him to quiet down. The Pharisees and the leaders of the day, of the religious leaders, well, well, they didn't want Jesus to speak because they were going to try to put a stigma that, that this is actually bad and, and he's doing something that the devil wants. The world is doing the same thing for us. You can't avoid sin. You might as well just give in to it. You can't do those things that are affecting. I mean, you can't do perfectly, right? So why bother? And our sinful nature starts to get into that and say, well, it's okay that I'm sinful. I'm just like everybody else, and and I'm stuck here. 
But then why do we say this is what the Bible says and do something different? That's where the Apostle Paul's letter to the Corinthians really, really lines it up for us. We believe and therefore speak. Listen again to the first verse. That's what the Apostle Paul says. It is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. So what I'm laying before you and what Scripture is pointing out is let's line up what we know about God and then how we live. Let's put that into practice, not because it's going to be the easiest thing in this world, but because this is what God has done for us. And so let's go on. Let's go into verses 14 and 15. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All this is for your benefit. So that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Perhaps I should step back just a second and I want you to think about all the things that the Apostle Paul put himself through. All the challenges that he faced and the difficulties that were in front of him. In fact, all the disciples for that matter. Did they live an easy life after they confessed Jesus as Lord? Did they live an easy life after the day of Pentecost? No, they were constantly attacked and even threatened with their life being taken away. So, why did they continue to follow Jesus? It wasn't the easy path. That's where the Apostle Paul draws our attention to, this is what we believe. The one who raised Jesus from the dead will raise us with Jesus and present you in his presence. Think about that. Think about all the things that we have demonstrated to God that we say is important, but we set aside. Love for one another. We say it's important, but as soon as someone else doesn't love us the same way, we get uptight at the least. We say that, that listening to God is important, but, but, if, but if we've got other things going on, we, we put them as a higher priority than actually coming to listen to God. We say what God gives us as blessings are important, but when it comes to actually giving Him thanks by giving some of those blessings back for His work, we say, well, I can't really afford it. Someone else can. And when we say serving God is important, we say, well, someone else is better at it than I am, and they've got more time than I do. You see how those don't match up with the things that we believe? But the Apostle Paul brings us back to the beginning of that equation, really, into Genesis. What did Adam and Eve deserve? What do we deserve because of our disobedience in our thoughts and actions is absolutely being wiped out of his presence. Instead, he says, I'm going to offer a sacrifice for you, one who is going to live that perfect life that you should be living. And when he gets put to death for his obedience, he's going to count it towards you. What is the impact of that? Do you realize how many people in this life are constantly looking for things that they can do in order to appease a God that they think is out there? How they hurt themselves, how they, they strive for things, and, and how they're constantly plagued with doubt and concerns, and they don't know the answer. Or maybe you'll think about those people that think that they can do all those things and still be right with God if we know that we could never reach that standard because we're not the perfect thing that God wants. What do you think when you compare those people out there into what we know as the truth? Your God loves you so much that in spite of your sin, in spite of your hearts that grow so cold so quickly, he sends his son so that your life can be paid for. And now your sins, they're not hidden to be brought out at a later time. They're actually gone. 
You have a God who says, I know every single one of your tiny little faults and I know how you egg someone on and I know how you divert attention and yet here I come to you. And oh yeah, here's my life. And here's my word. And there's my gift of baptism. And then my body and blood. All those things you get because not because you've been the best of the best or, or even better than someone else, but because God loved you so much. All this is for your benefit. So that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Treasure what we believe. See it as what it actually is, as God coming to people who can't do it on their own. And he loves us so much that he gives himself. How do you rectify the gospel with the Old Testament lesson? Jesus was coming to people that didn't really care. So much so that he had to point out that when we actually listen to his word and carry it out, we are acting as though we are his family. And that's what he makes us in baptism. That wonderful, gracious gift. How do you live? How do you act? Well, the Apostle Paul helps us a little bit with that understanding of what's going on. That when we recognize that death is changed to life, what we deserve is changed to a gift, now, what does God do for us? Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Let me just remind you a little bit about the Apostle Paul. I already mentioned all the abuse that he received, right? Well, he barely touched the top of the iceberg on that one. He was stoned. He was flogged. He was stripped. He was shipwrecked. You, you can add much more than that. What do you expect someone who gets all those things for serving someone? What, what do you expect out of him? Enough is enough, Lord. I can't handle this anymore. This is what it is to be a believer. I can't deal. No, instead, you get these very words. We do not lose heart. Even though we are wasting away, we are being renewed. And all these troubles that we're facing, although they might be earth-shattering and life-changing, are light and momentary troubles. Because what I have waiting for me, and what you have waiting for you, is far greater than anything. Paul? Not only do we have to think about all the trouble that Paul faced, we also have to tr figure out where Paul came from. And that was, he was just like those Pharisees making fun of Jesus and trying to get rid of that message. All because he thought he had it figured out and that he was the best, the best master and controller of his life. What we believe then impacts us. What Paul then was brought to faith impacted the way he lived. So the question isn't just, well, okay, let's move on. It's what does that do for you? Well, when we look at our sin, we don't look at it as something that we say, I can't help it, or, or this is bad and I'll try to do better. But we say, I, I don't need that to live. We're going to struggle, but we can turn away from it. And the troubles and the difficulties that we might face, maybe our friends will make fun of us that we're not sleeping in. Or our kids are, are not going to able to go to every single thing that they want to because church is important. Or maybe we have to set up our schedules to go to Bible class as part of our worship. Those aren't going to cause us life-changing problems. Light and momentary, maybe. I mean, even if we think about it, receiving God's word and hearing that message, is that really a downer? 
Because the purpose that God gives us all of these blessings is not so that we can say, Oh, man. But eternal glory. Eternal blessings waiting for us as we gather around God's Word, as we make worship a priority, as we show our thanks to God with the blessings that we have been given, if we support and encourage others instead of, of looking to, to nitpick or, or get upset because they did this or that to me, glory that outweighs them all. That's for us as a congregation. That's for us as we can consider who God has placed in our circumstances, whether family or friends or someone I've never met before, and how might I offer myself when they lose heart or when we're wasting away. What I believe is seen in how I live. But the Apostle Paul doesn't stop with just that final little bit of a message that what we believe and therefore speak, that troubles will be changed to glory. It's just that pie in the sky. He tells us that it affects the way we look now. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Pastor Vink's message and the reminder of what God has given to us as a Sabbath rest, as spiritual rest that we receive when we come to worship, is so that we're focusing on what is going to last. What is going to be for us with eternity If only Adam and Eve had thought about that, that what they had disobeyed God in was only something temporary, right? And yet we constantly hear this message and start thinking, all oh, these temporary things I need. I, I need whatever that food is that, that I have to have. I, I know what that car is and I have to get that. Or, or I know what that job is and I have to, or I have to make things nice at home so that they don't get on my case. Those are only temporary because they're seen. What God promises and guides and directs us is something that brings us eternal benefit, that promises that working through His Word, through baptism and the Lord's Supper, are those things that actually give us better than what any kind of worldly offer is. And that as we live that faith, we'll have rewards that can never be taken away. So what, what are you doing when you see that we believe and speak so that we may focus on the eternal? How does that look for you? The power of the message and the reason for us in living it is not because I want a better life on this earth. And that was very clear to us as we went through this, this health challenge that, that said, well, you know, if, if we want this life to last, we got to do all we can to protect it. Did it really work? Are we able to elongate our life in any way by the, by the things that we, we do? And if we're telling God that, that we would rather have it this way than that way, who's in charge? And so, with the Apostle Paul, I encourage you to think about how it is that we believe and therefore speak. Remembering, first of all, that death was changed to life for us. God didn't just say, oh, I wish all your bad things away. He actually took them away. And that the troubles that we face are nothing in comparison to the eternal glory that He has actually won for us. So that we can focus on the eternal even as we live every moment now. We believe and therefore speak. Amen. Please stand. 
Now the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, your Savior. Amen. Our response, and appropriate for us in all points and times, is to confess our faith. We'll use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe. In our prayer of the church this afternoon, we will have several special petitions. Uh, we continue to keep Miss Stephanie Sennon in our prayers. Um, as she's, she is still entertaining the call or deliberating the call to serve as our 4K teacher in our school. Um, we'll also ask that the Lord would guide and direct us as we continue to look for our first and second grade teacher. Uh, we'll give thanks uh, with Megan Kester and Rob Dienick. Uh, who will be united in marriage. Uh, Megan is uh, Brenda Kester's uh, daughter, and then also Lee and Dolores Hubbard's granddaughter, um, as, as they get married here on Saturday. And we'll keep in our prayers a prayer of thanksgiving for Leonard Heiliger, who's going to be celebrating his 99th birthday this coming week. Let us pray. Lord God, our maker and preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. We are not worthy of all the mercies you show us. You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. We thank you for those who teach and preach your saving truth at this place and everywhere. Grant them a rich measure of patience, wisdom, and love. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Heal those who are sick. Cheer those who are sad. Calm those who are distressed and comfort all who are old and infirm. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Grant your blessing to every nation on earth. Where there are wars, may there be peace. Where there is hatred, let it be healed. Where there is poverty, danger, or disaster, come with your almighty power to help and restore. Lord of the Church, we thank you for the privilege that we have in extending calls for others to serve in our midst. We ask that you would continue to watch over and be with Stephanie Sennon as she considers the call that we've given to her to serve as our 4K teacher in our school. Lord, we also thank you for all the blessings that you give husbands and wives, and that you brought Megan Kester and Rob Dienick together. We ask that you would bless their marriage and all those things that are going and happening on this weekend, that you would give them peace, and that you would remind them that you are the one who works all things out for their good. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings of life as well, that you have watched over Leonard Heiliger and have given him opportunity to celebrate his 99th birthday this coming week. We ask that you would continue to strengthen him and give him many blessings. And we ask that you would also remind all of us that each day is a gift of your grace. Now, Lord, hear us as we bring you our private petitions.
we bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus, our Lord, and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you, that we may serve you in whatever way is pleasing in your sight. Amen. Hear us, Lord, as we pray boldly and confidently as Jesus has taught us. You may be seated. We'll continue with our hymn, hymn 455, Rise to Arms, with prayer employ you. We pray. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation. And bestow on us your saving peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.
Welcome once again to God's house, and glad you're able to join us for worship today. I rest assured that, that we're not eliminating the 330 service. We were just asking for a little bit of input. Oh my goodness, look like I was taking away the favorite puppy or something. Just, <laughs> it's okay. Just, we want to constantly assess and just see how things are going. So we're just looking at what, what our options are and what things might be. Um, but you are sure still able to provide feedback if you can find that one of the other services will serve you just as well as this service or this is the best option. You can still let me know. Um, just don't withhold snacks or treats from me as someone did. I won't get if you take it away. <sighs> now that, if you do that, then it means that since we're keeping it, then you got to, pro- no, I'm just kidding, whatever. Okay. Um, we do have some call news. Uh, we uh, received a decision from Aaron LaPointe, kind of alluded to already in the prayers, the recognition of the prayers. I'll just read that for you. She writes, Dear fellow redeemed of St. Paul's Lutheran Church in school, during the last few weeks I've had the opportunity to discuss the ministry of St. Paul's with various members of the congregation. I've appreciated all the words of encouragement and prayers given on my behalf. The Lord has certainly blessed this church and school with talented and earnest proclaimers of the gospel. The Lord has led me to return this call. I have witnessed His guiding hand as I deliberated and am comforted in the fact that all decisions are made to His glory and by His will. St. Paul's will be blessed with a called worker according to God's timing. As always, I will keep the congregation in my prayers as our Lord leads you to fill this vacant position. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. In Christ, Aaron LaPointe. So we are still looking at that first and second grade position in the school. Um, It certainly is a need for us. Um, And so we are looking at different ways. There will be a um, a call meeting of sorts in the after the second service tonight um, for the voters so that we can kind of consider the options and give direction to the council. Um, we are still waiting on uh, uh, Stephanie Sennon's uh, decision on that, so we'll continue to keep that in God's hands and her in our prayers. Um, so uh, keep that in mind as well as we go forward. Um, there is adult Bible class, so if you come to Thursday night, you're more than welcome to come just for the Bible class. Um, the rumor is that we've started doing coffee again, so just saying, that's kind of good. Um, so there will be fellowship time between the services and then coffee uh, with Bible class um, in the fellowship hall. We don't have Sunday school going yet. We're taking a two-week break before we start our summer, and so uh, this Sunday we don't have Sunday school. Um, but we are looking ahead to what Vacation Bible School has to offer, and we're going to try to do it in a one-day event. Um, exactly how it's going to look, we're still kind of, we've got the idea of the materials, but how we're going to present it, we're still working out. But what I can say is I really do need some help, um, individuals that be willing to be there. Um, the time frame would generally be for the helpers, 8.30 to noon or so. Um, maybe we might go to one or two, I'm not quite sure yet, but you can split it up in other ways. Um, so if you're interested, we also can very much use support in the materials Um, that we are getting for Vacation Bible School and any handouts that we'll be giving. So uh, if you can't be there in person, uh, monetary uh, help will be a good good thing as well. Um, And then as I, so that I don't miss out the other Bible classes, uh, so we have our Sunday morning Bible class. We do have a Sunday evening which lines up with our Wednesday evening right now looking at the Lord's Prayer. Uh, So uh, we're getting close to the end of that one and we'll be shifting to a new topic in a couple weeks. I don't recall if Pastor got the two on the same day or not, but I think the Sunday was just a lesson behind yet on uh, what the Wednesday night is doing. So um, you can certainly come to a study of the Lord's Prayer at any point. It doesn't have to be built on each other. So I encourage you to make use of these opportunities that we have in order to study God's Word together. Uh, Then there's the Tuesday morning Bible class. Um, It's looking at uh, the book Prepared to Answer. Uh, by Professor Mark Paulston. Um, it's presented in such a way so that uh, you think about how unbelievers are wondering what's going on and what we believe and even taking some of those beliefs out of context, but how we might be able to respond in using stories. So um, it's, I mean, the topics are across the board on all kinds of questions that people have based on 
you know, is there a God? What about God's promises? Does Jesus really live? And all those things that, that we face on an ongoing basis, but provide us some opportunities for us to, you know, say, what about this or what about that? So uh, Tuesday mornings, 8 o'clock, join us for that. Or get the materials from Pastor Vic. You can get that to work alongside it if you want to. Lord's blessings. Have a good week.